Technologies Private Limited, myself Arvind Paliwal and I am here to explain about Communication System Trainer Kit. The kit here which we are using has order code 40557. In this kit, we have different types of systems to work on and have many experiments of different kits which we will put in the middle and use the main unit with it. So now let's move on to the kit and see what this kit has. So let's give a brief of this kit. First we have the power supply here. This is the transmitter panel. This is the NG LPF card. This is the DT FG3 audio frequency generator, sync sine wave generator, function generator and here we have audio amplifier, MIC amplifier, FM, FSK, MU, FSK, CM3 detector, AM, FM receiver, AM detector, FM transmitter, AM, XM amplifier and 0 to plus 15 volt and 0 to minus 15 volt variable supply. So here we have our first panel which is fiber optics laser experiment panel CM1. It has connect external power supply, transmitter section, receiver section, interface experiment, RS232 phase inter interface. Now firstly we will connect from the main unit's power supply plus 12 volt to this panel's 12 volt. From this panel's negative 12 volt to the CM1's negative 12 volt. And then we will connect the ground to CM1's ground. This is the power supply which will be common in all the kits which will be present here. So let's start with our first experiment DC characteristics of transmitter diodes. Now let's move on to the procedure. First as you can see we have supplied it from the main supply. Then second is to see all the switch faults are at off position. Now we will connect the fiber optic cable from connector 7 and 15. From here. We will keep the rotary switch which is it at IR position. Now select high gain using receiver gain select switch from here. Now do not give any input to 5 and 6 banana sockets. Keep the emitter dias control port to minimum position at which DC bias LED red light in transmitter section does not glow. So as you can see this light is not blinking. So now note the DC voltage at 17 DC coupled output it should be 0. So we will check the output at DC coupled output here and you can see it's nearly 0 in the emitter. So now we will just adjust the emitter DC bias control port such that TP22 here shows 0.5 volt DC on DMM and note the corresponding voltage at DC coupled output 17 of the receiver section. Now you can see it's 0.5 volt at this TP22 and when we will check at 17 DC coupled output you can see it's nearly 1.7 volts. We will repeat the above procedure for around 9 to 10 readings of output voltage every time increase this input voltage by 0.5 volt. Now receive, repeat the above procedure for remaining emitters by keeping the rotary switch at position red LED and cable at 8 and 15. So we will keep at 8 and 15 and we will switch this rotary switch to red. Now repeat it for position blue LED and cable and then for laser and cable. Now plot the graph of VS, VO and VS IR characteristics that is forward current versus reverse current. Now with this we end our first experiment on this kit that is DC characteristics of transmitter diode. The experiment is sensitivity of optical fiber. Now let's start with procedure. Given supply here we have again 12 volt plus minus 12 volt and ground. Then we will keep all the small switches in off position 
and then connect fiber optics connector num from number 7 to number 15 and put this on IR sensor. Now we will keep the rotary switch in position IR. Select high gain using receiver gain select from here. So now we will give sine wave input 5V peak to peak and frequency 1 kilohertz to 6 AC coupled input. And make sure that switch is in full clockwise direction. Now note the corresponding output voltage at output at receiver AC coupled 18 point and tabulate the reading. So you can see it's coming 3.93 approx 4 volts. Now take out different readings at different voltage at TP22 and receiver at output at 80 AC coupled output and make a table as shown in manual. So with this we end our experiment on sensitivity of optical fiber. Let's move on to our next experiment that is digital frequency response digital link V.W. Now let's see the procedure. Here we have to give the supply. Here which you can see keep all the switch of switch faults in off position. Do not give any input to 5 to and 6 banana sockets. Keep the rotary switch in the position IR. Now connect the fiber optics cable between 7 and 15. Select high gain using receiver gain select switch. Short pins 9 and 10 of work strip provided on receiver side. Next, rotate the emitter DC bias control port in the transmitter section in extreme anti-clockwise direction. Now, give TTL input with frequency 100 kHz to 5 DC TTL input and adjust threshold port of receiver TP23 that you get TTL output with 50% duty cycle at TTL output 21. We will take the TTL input from this point variable TTL FG output and then we will put it at the 5 DC TTL input. Now we will set this rotary switch at 100 kilohertz so we as we have to provide with 100 kilohertz of wave frequency here and we can set the frequency with this in the main unit. Now we will without uh, disturbing above settings take the reading from 10 hertz and increase frequency as shown in table till you reach a point that output is stick to a high voltage and not showing a square wave output note the corresponding frequency. So we will connect a DSO across the ground 18 and 21 of this kit and you can see it's near 10 kilohertz and we can't see any waveform and which we, when we will increase this you can see a square wave coming in DSO here. Repeat the above procedure for remaining emitters by keeping rotary switch at position red LED and cable at 8 and 15 from here to here and switching this to red. Then repeat it for blue LED that's 10 number and pin number 15 and set this at blue. And now at last do it for laser that is 0.9 and 0.15. Note select low gain using receiver gain select switch for laser. Now with this we conclude our this experiment of digital frequency response digital link B.W. Move on to our next experiment numerical aperture. So we will see the procedure. Firstly give supply plus 12 volt minus 12 volt and ground in the circuit. Then keep all the switch faults or off position connect optical fiber between 8 and 15. Keep the rotary switch in position LED red and then do not give any input to 5 and 6 banana sockets. Next rotate the emitter DC bias control port in transmitter section in extreme clockwise direction 
and then note the reading as V DC max. You can see, you can see this DC emitter port is in full clockwise direction and you can see the output is coming 3.56 volts at this TP22 pin. Now we will give 1 kilohertz and 5V PP to DC coupled input 5 and observe output at 17 DC coupled output. Now as we have to see output at DC coupled output 17 you can see it's coming near 0 0.6 volts. Now remove the cable from receiver section and take a numerical aperture apparatus to connect other end of this cable. So this is a numerical aperture apparatus which has a scale here, a screen at the back and the LED from here which we will see through optical fiber. So now, this is the point, you can see the LED and when I will pull the screen towards me, the area of its spreadness increases. The distance between the tip of cable mounted on numerical apparatus, apparatus and the circular scale should be minimum. 10 mm, you will observe a red illumination on the circular scale of the viewer as you have seen. Now you can measure the measurement of numerical aperture apparatus in fiber optic system using the formula given in the manual. Let's start with our last experiment, voice transmission using direct transmission as well as modulated using PWM. So now let's move on to the procedure of this experiment. Firstly, we will supply with the main supply from here to this kit and then we will switch off all the fault switch and then keep the emitter DC bias control port to minimum position that is position at which this light doesn't blink here. So next we will not give any output to 11 and 12 banana pins. Keep the rotary switch in position 5 to select emitter FSH 485 IR. Keep the gain select switch of receiver in high gain position and now connect fiber optical cable to 7 and 15. Now keep the emitter DC bias control taught in the anti-clockwise direction and give TTL input 1 kilohertz to DC coupled input 5 and adjust the threshold port to give a TTL output in 21 pin. Now we will adjust this port at 1 kHz given here and pull this knob at TTL point. So this will give the TTL output to this DC TTL input here at 5 pin number 5. So you can see we have set it at 1 kHz from this at DSO you can see the wavelength at 1 kHz frequency. Now the output at TTL pin 21 is is now this. Now remove the TTL input from 5 and do not disturb the setting which we have done in the last steps. Now we will give 1 kilohertz sine wave amplitude 3 volt to signal input 11 of PWM section. Now give 64 hertz triangular wave to the point to the input of pin number 12. the triangular wave from this at we can put it on triangular and then set it at 100 kilohertz so and then set the frequency from here and then we can measure it in the CR so you can see the frequency is near 64 kilohertz in the triangular wave now connect the PDM PWM output and give PWM output 30 to DC coupled input at 5 
Now we will measure the PWM output in the DSO ground at pin number 16 and the positive terminal at PWM output. You can see the wave at 64 kilohertz in the DSO. Now give this TTL output to 21 to input of DC blocking, NGLPF, DC blocking output, low pass filter and blocking output low pass filter NGLPF from main unit and observe output at output at low pass filter. Give this TTL output 21 to input blocking of DC blocking NGLPF on main unit DC blocking output low pass filter NGLPF from main unit and observe output at output of low pass filter. You can see the output waveform which we have given the input like this. Now we will connect the output of low pass filter to input of audio amplifier in the trans receiver panel. Now we will connect the audio amplifier output to speaker input and observe waveform at output. Now remove the sine wave 1 kHz from socket 11 and connect MIC output to socket 11. And connect MIC output to socket 11. MIC, MIC output is present on the main unit in trans receiver panel. Now your circuit is ready for voice transmission and without altering above setup, remove the signal you gave at MIC amplifier input and speak on MIC which you will get in the kit. Just pin it here. You can use this MIC to get the output through the speakers and also use these cords provided in the kit to use the out to get the hearing output from the speaker end. You can put it inside this pin. And then you can speak on MIC and get your output in these. So here we end our experiment upon this voice transmission using direct transmission as well as modulated using PWM. This kit also has PC interface using RS232 which is this cable. You can put it here and connect it through your PC and make your works done. Here with this we wrap up our experiment on CM1 panel of this kit. So now let's start with our second panel CM2 which is ch first channel signaling sampling and reconstruction, fourth channel TDM, PAM and PWM, PPM, PFM experimental panel. Let's start with our first experiment on this kit that is single channel sampling and reconstruction. So let's move on to the procedure. Firstly we will connect the supply of plus 12 volts minus 12 volts and ground now keep the slider SW3 present here SW3 present here in a lower position that is SF select frequency mode now measure 10 megahertz at TP9 put the ground at 26 pin number and then measure at TP29 TP9 here you can see it's coming 10 megahertz now we will set LED 0 by pressing pulsar switch and measure frequency at socket 28 TX clock by using FC and is 62.5 kilohertz So we have set LED 0 using this Pulsar SW. Now as we have said we will measure frequency at pin number 28 TX clock. So you can see the frequency is near 62 Hz. 
Now we will observe 32 kilohertz at socket 27 and which is fed to external clock input DT double FG3. Keep external clock SW at LHS position. Here we will keep the ground of CRO at pin number 25 and will measure at pin number 27. You can see we are getting a wave near 32 kilohertz frequency. Now keep SPDT SW SW2 in upper position that is CH0 mode 1 CH SH here. Now we will connect pin number 27 as said to external clock input in left hand side on the main unit here. Now we will give 1 kHz 1 VPP sync sine wave from DTFG to socket 1. Now we will give this to socket 1 and observe TX output and SH output at socket 5 and 6. So now we will observe the output at TX OP which you can see in the DSO and then SH OP. So with this we are end our first experiment signal channel sampling and reconstruction. Next start with our next experiment time division multiplexing. So let's move on to the procedure. Keep slider SW, SW3 is lower position that is SF select mode and then we need to connect to Now we will measure the output in the CRO at pin number TP9 It should be 10 MHz You can see it's coming near 10 MHz Now we will set LED 0 by pressing pulsar switch and measure frequency at socket 28 by using FC and is 62 point you can see this is the pulsar switch and this we are set at LED 0 so now we need to measure at socket number 28 you can see it's coming near 62 hertz 62 kilohertz we will supply 250 hertz sine wave to socket number 1. Then we will supply 500 hertz sine wave from DT double FG3 to pin, uh, socket number 2. Then we will supply 2 kilohertz DT double FG3 to socket number 3. Now connect 2 kilohertz DT double FG3 to socket number 4. Observe 32 kilohertz at socket 27 and which is fed to external clock input DT double FG3. Keep switch at LHS side. Keep this switch to the LHS side at external clock. Now connect pin number 5 to pin number 8 then pin number 29 to pin number 30 then pin number 28 pin number 28 to pin number 31 then connect pin number 9 input to input of P1 at of LPF NGLPF Now connect pin number 10 to input 2 Now pin number 11 to input 3 And at last pin number 12 to input 4 Keep SPDT SW SW2 switch in lower position that is in TDM mode here. Now feed 5 VPP as we have done here 250 Hz to channel 0, 500 Hz to channel 1, 1 kHz to channel 2 and 2 kHz to channel Now we will observe the transmitted signal of channel 0, channel 1, channel 2 and channel 3 at 2P of each one 2P1, 2P2, 2P3 and 2P4. Now as said we will check the input at 2P1.
you can say see the wave coming output here and then at output 2 3 and 4 these are the reconstructed waves from which we have given like this only we can do it on many ways effect on variable delay like switching this at SW3 key to SVD position in top up and then creating a 50% duty cycle that is LED 15 is on. Now with this we wind up our experiment upon time division multiplexing mode 1 3 wire connection between transmitter and receiver 4 analog channel. Let's start with our next experiment pulse frequency modulation and demodulation. So the unit objective is to complete the pulse frequency modulation and demodulation as a method of digital communication. Now let's move on to the procedure keep switch S7 CM2 in the right side that is PFM mode. And now keep the S6 switch CM2 is in the lower position that is PFM mode. Set carrier frequency of FG at 64 kilohertz 1 ppp and feed audio signal 1 kilohertz 0.15 bpp from audio oscillator to FM input of FGDT double FG3. You can set the frequency of this audio output through this frequency meter. Keep a AM carrier counterpart on DT double FG3 panel at normal FG position which is this. Now we will observe the FM modulation at FG output socket and which is fed to socket number 21 CM2. You can see it in CRO. Now connect 16 pin number to input of DC block NGLPF. Now we will connect the DC blocking amplifier NGLPF to input of LPF and keep port of DC blocking NGLPF in fully clockwise direction. So we will connect this to here and then this point to our output point and then as said. Now we will measure first waveform at FM output 21. You can see the waveform in the DSO at output pin number 21. Now at pin number 15. You can see and refer it through the manual. Now we will see our output at demodulated on 2P1. Now you can see the demodulated wave from this in the DSO. With this we end our experiment on pulse frequency modulation and demodulation and with this we finish our second kit CM2 panel. Now let's move on to our third panel that is carrier modulation demodulation experimental panel CM3 and attach it with the main unit. So now our first objective or experiment in this panel is of study of ASK modulation and demodulation. So now let's start with procedure of our experiment 1. Firstly connect plus 12 volt ground and minus 12 volt from main unit or master unit to socket 1, 2 and 3 of CM3 panel respectively. Now we will observe 250 kHz at socket 26 of, on CR. So top socket 26, you can observe 250, mega, uh, 250 kHz on frequency on the CR. And now we will observe frequency 32 kHz at socket 32. So you can see the frequency 32 kHz on CRO. Now connect socket 32 to socket 27 that is 32 kilohertz TX clock. 
Now connect socket 27 to input clock of PRBS NGLPF card here. Now make sure that this PRBS switch is on on position that is in upward direction. Then connect the output from PRBS data at NGLPF card to pin number 33 or socket number 33 present on this. Now we will connect socket 33 TX data PRBS output from NGLPF to mod input present here at socket number 30. Now keep VR3, VR4 and VR5 in fully clockwise direction and set IFT1, IFT2 and IFT3 as such that you observe maximum amplitude of 250 kHz, 250 kHz I and 500 kHz at socket 4, 9 and 30. Now connect either of 4 or 9 or 13 socket to socket number 24. Here I am connecting socket number 9 to socket number 24. Now we will observe ASK modulation at socket 21 as per the waveform given in the manual. You can see the modulated waveform at socket 21 in the DSO or CRO which we are using here. Now we will connect socket 21 to socket 7 that is mod output to demodulated input. Now we will connect socket 8 to socket 29 that is socket 8 demodulation output to input of LPF from here to here. Now we will connect socket 35 LPF output to socket number 19 bipolar TTL input. Now we will set VR1 such that you will observe original PRPS data at socket 12. This is the VR1 so to adjust the wave. So you can observe the PRPS data in the DSO through output socket number 12. Now with this we complete our experiment first the study of ASK modulation and demodulation. So now let's start with another experiment upon this module CM3. So our another experiment is study of FSK modulation and demodulation on this kit. So let's move on to the procedure. Firstly we will connect same plus 12 volt ground and minus 12 volt from master unit to socket 1, 2 and 3 of CM3 panel respectively. Now we will observe again 250 kHz at socket 26 and then at socket 32 on CRO 32 kHz from here and here on CR. Now we will connect socket 32 to socket number 27. Now we will connect socket number 27 to input clock of PRBS at NGLPF card. Now keep sure that PRBS switch is in the upside that is PRBS on position. Now connect PRBS data from NGLPF to socket number 33. Now connect socket number 33 to socket number 10. Now we will connect socket 10 to socket 33 present here connect socket 5 to socket number 31 in modulator 2 again keep VR3, VR4 and VR5 here 
fully clockwise direction and set IFT1, IFT2, IFT3 such that you can observe maximum amplitude of 250 kHz I, 250 kHz Q and 500 kHz at socket 4, 9 and 13 respectively. Now set 250 kHz I, 3 VPP, 250 kHz Q, 3 VPP and 500 kHz 3 VPP carrier sine waves at socket 4, 9 and 3 respectively by using VR3, VR4 and VR5. Now we will connect socket 4 or 9 to socket number 24. Here I am connecting socket number 4 to socket number 24. Now we will connect socket number 13 to socket number 25. Now we will observe FSK modulation at socket number 18 as per the following waveform given in the manual. You can see the FSK modulated wave in the DSO screen present here at socket number 18. Now we will connect socket number 18 to socket number 34 and then socket number 36 to socket number 29. 36 to 29. Now we will connect socket number 35 to socket number 19. Now we will set VR1 such that we will observe original PRBS data at socket number 12 that is detected PRBS data. So with this we end our experiment on FSK modulation and demodulation study. With this we end our experiments upon carrier modulation demodulation experimental panel CM3. So now we will start with our fourth external panel that is 1 by 2 channel PCM modulation demodulation with frame and bit synchronization error detection and correction experimental panel CM4 and attach it with the main unit. Now we will start with our first experiment on this kit that would be single channel pulse code modulation and demodulation by various methods 3 wire, 2 wire or 1 wire method. So now let's move on to the procedure. First connect plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from main or master unit to socket 1, 3 and 2 of panel respectively. Now make sure to keep switch SW1 in the right position that is select fast mode and keep switch 2 is in the left position which is select one channel mode. Now we will need to observe 250 kilohertz at socket 14 and say observe 16 kilohertz at socket 11 then observe socket 4 with 32 kilohertz. Now as told we will observe 250 kilohertz at socket 14. For this put the main one of DSO or CRO to pin number 14 or socket number 14 and ground at pin number 22. Now as you can see in the DSO we have 250 kilohertz reading of wave. Now we will check at socket number 11 for 16 kilohertz. You can see the 16 kilohertz coming in DSO reading. Now we will observe 32 kilohertz at socket 4. You can see in the DSO we are having 32 kilohertz reading. We will feed socket number 4 to external clock input DT double FG3 on main unit and keep external clock switch at left hand side.
Make sure the switch is on left hand side. Now we will connect one of four sync sine waves that is 250, 500 or half kilowatts from DTFG3 to channel 0 at socket 17. Here I am using 500 hertz. Now adjust amplitude of sync sine wave 4 VPP from appropriate present knob DT double FG 3. We will use this knob to set it at 4 VPP. Now we will keep SW3 sync detector at upside position that is off and keep SW4 and SW5 in upside that is off position. Now we will keep SW6 hold cap receiver in the downside that is fast mode and SW7 and SW8 in upside that is no error position. Make sure to keep all switch fault in left side that is off position. Now we will connect socket 14 to socket 15. Then we will connect socket 11 to socket 12. Then we will connect socket 8 to socket 9. And at last we will connect socket 16 to input 1 of LGLPF on main units NGLPF card. Now we will observe reconstructed one of four sync sine waves at 2P1 and 4P1 as per the following table given in the manual. Now as per the observation table, firstly we can check for 250 kHz for this we have to put this pin in 250 Hz here and then set this knob at 4 VPP. So you can see that at 2P1 we are getting the reconstructed sine wave and for same 4P1 and then for other we will see 500 Hertz similarly 1 kilohertz and similarly 2 kilohertz. So with this we end our first experiment upon this panel CM4 that is single phase channel pulse mode modulation demodulation by various method 3 wire 2 wire and 1 wire so now let's start with our next experiment two channel pulse code modulation demodulation by various methods 3 wire 2 wire and 1 wire so here we will do first mode 1 that is 3 wire connection between transmitter and receiver and two analog channels so now let's move on to the procedure. Firstly, we will connect plus 12 volt supply minus 12 volt and ground from main unit to CM4 unit at present here on terminals 1, 2 and 3. Now make sure to keep switch SW1 in the right position that is select fast mode and keep switch SW2 in right position 2 select 2 channel mode. Now observe 250 kilohertz at socket 14 and at socket 11 observe 16 kilohertz and socket 4 observe 32 kilohertz. Use pin number 22 as ground pin. Now we can observe pin number 14 as 250 kilohertz then 11 at 16 kilohertz and 4 as 32 kilohertz. Now we will feed socket 4 to external clock input and make sure that this clock switch is in the left hand side direction at external clock. Now connect any two out of four sync sine wave that is 250 or 500 hertz and 1 or 2 kilohertz from DT double FG3 card to CS0 or channel 1 socket 17 and socket 21. So here I am connecting 
500 hertz to socket number 21 and 1 kilohertz to socket number 17 that is channel 0. Now we will adjust the amplitude of sync sine wave 1 VPP from appropriate present knob at DT double FG3. We can adjust from here. For 1 kilohertz, we can adjust the voltage from here and for 500 hertz, we can adjust it from this knob. Now we will keep SW3 switch in the upside position that is off as well as S4, SW4 and SW5 too in the up direction that is off position. Now we will keep SW6 in downside that is fast mode and SW7 and SW8 in upside that is no error mode. Make sure all fault switches are in off position that is in the left side. Now we will connect socket 14 to socket 15 and then socket 11 to socket 12 then socket 8 to socket 9 and now we will connect socket 16 to input 1 and socket number 20 to input 2. Now for the observation table we can check the first input at NGLPF card at 2P1 and 2P2 from channel 0 by providing channel 0 with 250 Hz and channel 1 with 500 Hz. So let's see. Here we are having at 2P1 the wave you can see it and at 2P2 you can see it. Now for the second table given in the manual we will switch the changes as 1 kilohertz to channel 0 and 2 kilohertz to channel 1. Now again we will check the output at 2P1 it's 1 kilo it's 1100 1000 hertz and at 2P2 it's again nearly 2 kilohertz. So with this we end our this experiment upon two channel pulse code modulation and demodulation by various methods 3 wire, 2 wire and 1 wire. This can be used then done by 2 wire and 1 wire similar. Now let's start with our next experiment that is study of error code check such as even parity, odd parity and 1 bit, 2 bit error simulation and correction by Hamming code. So now let's move on to the procedure. So firstly we will supply plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from main unit to CM4 unit at 1, 2 and 3 points. Now we will connect either 250 or 500 hertz at point number 17 and 1 kilohertz or 2 kilohertz at point number 21. So here I have connected 500 hertz at channel 0 point number 17 and 1 kilohertz at point number 21 channel 1. Now we will connect 4 Pin number four to uh, pin number four to thirty two kilohertz DTF double G card on main unit. Make sure that this external clock switch is on left hand side. Now connect socket eighteen to the input clock of PRBS NGLPF card on the main unit. Now we will connect the PRBS data NGLPF to socket number 19. Now we will connect make sure that PRBS switch here is in on position. 
that is upside now connect socket 14 to socket 15 then connect socket 8 to socket 9 now connect socket 16 to input of input 1 of NGLPF card on main unit keep switch SW1 in the right side that is fast mode and keep SW2 2 in the two channel mode that is right side SW3 in the down side now keep switch SW4 5 7 and 8 2 in up position and then keep SW6 in the down side that is fast mode now observe reconstructed sine wave at 2P1 and 2P2 or 4P1 and 4P2 make sure to connect channel 20 to input 2 so let me check at 2P1 so you can see it's coming near 500 Hz as we have given channel 0 the input of 500 Hz and at 4P1 you can see the waveform and then again from channel 1 1 kHz we can see at 2P2 reconstructed sine wave that's 1 kHz same frequency and at 4P22 so with this we end our this experiment 2 now with this experiment we end our experiment upon experiment panel CM4 so now let me start with the next interesting panel of this kit that is BM4 ultrasound HRM and audio battery experimental panel so let me give some basics of this panel so here is the audiometry area and this is the ultrasound HRM which have ultrasound sensor connector, transmitter output, transmitter receiver input, detuned input, adjustable frequency notch, notch filter, band pass filter, AC amplifier and comparator. In audiometry we have stereo head earphones output, audiometry to ultrasound switch, fault switches, noise intensity uh, select frequency audio intensity ports so let's move on to our first experiment that is detuned amplifier at 2.24 megahertz so now firstly we will connect plus 12 volt minus 12 volt and ground from main unit to pin number 1 2 3 of bm4 panel Switch S6 is at left side means all are off. Now apply sine wave with variable frequency with 9 volt from external function generator it to TP2. We need to set this at sine. Now firstly we will need to set the frequency of this 9, VV, 9 VPP sine wave from this knob so we will set this frequency at 1.85 megahertz from this knob now make sure that switch S2 is in up position that is ultrasound now connect TP6 at CRO channel positive and ground at pin number 90 you can see the detained output in the reading in CRO so we can plot graph between input frequency versus output voltage from here by changing the frequency from here you can see by changing the frequency the detained output changes too so with this we end our experiment upon detuned amplifier at 2.24 MHz frequency. So now let's start with our another experiment that's band stop 
or notch filter. Firstly, we will connect the power supply of plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from main unit to the PM4 panel at points 1, 2 and 3. Now we will switch S2 switch down at audio metal. Now switch S6 on left side that means all should be off. So now we will apply signal of 1 hertz, 1 volt peak to peak to input of filter circuit and observe the output on CR from pin number 16. You can see the readings on CR. Now we will vary the frequency from 1 hertz to 500 hertz slowly and you can see So when you will switch it till 500 hertz, wave will look like this on the CR. Now record the observations in the table given in the manual, vary pot P1 so that notch frequency is as close to as 50 hertz as possible. Plot graph frequency versus voltage gain using the observation table, calculate the cutoff frequency and match with the group. Now, as we will vary this P1 port, so you can see there is a slight rise as we give 50 hertz full frequency to notch filter. With this, we end our experiment upon band stop notch filter. Now we end our experiments upon panel BM4. So now let's start with our fifth experimental panel that is delta adaptive delta cvsd sigma delta modulation demodulation experiment parallel cm5 so now let's start with our first experiment that is delta modulation demodulation the unit for this objective is in this unit you will be able to study delta modulation and demodulation now let's start with the procedure firstly we will use applying sine wave for modulating input. Now connect positive plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from main unit's power supply to power supply points 1, 2 and 3 of CM5. Now we will supply 1 kilohertz 1 BPP sync sine wave from DT double FG3 on main unit to pin number 8. So we will supply it from here to here. Make sure that this switch is on right hand side and we will adjust our wave voltage from this port. Now we will supply from 32 kilohertz to this point on main unit and make sure this time this switch is on left side now we will connect socket number 5 to socket number 9 and now we will connect socket number 11 to socket number 6 After this, we will connect socket number 7 to socket number 4. Now, we will connect socket number 14 to socket number 15. Now, we will connect socket number 7 to CRO's positive terminal and socket number 26 to CRO's negative terminal ground. You can put it here at 23 ground or 26 ground as per your wish. Make sure all switches of fault are on off position that means on the left side. Make sure that switch SW1 and SW2 are 2 on the left side. 
Now make sure SW5 and SW6 are in upward position and SW3 and SW4 are to the right position. That means on gain control automatic. So when we will put this on 7 you can see the demodulated wave here. For demodulated wave, we will need to set up some more connections. Leave these connections as they are and connect pin number 18 to pin number 19. Now connect pin number 20 to input 1 on NGLPF card on main unit. Now connect CRO across 2P1 and ground pin number 26. So now you can see the demodulated wave from NGLPF card of main unit is here on CR. With this we end our first experiment delta modulation and demodulation. Now next start with our other experiment adaptive CVSD delta modulation and demodulation. This unit's objective is that you will be able to study adaptive CVSD delta modulation and demodulation. Firstly, let's move on to procedure. So, firstly, connect plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt, and ground to the supply of CM5 at points 1, 2, and 3. Now, we will supply 1 kilohertz, 1 VPP sine wave from DT double FG to pin number 8. Now we will connect spin number 17 to 32 kilohertz external clock circuit. Make sure that this switch is on left hand side external clock. Now we will connect TTL DT double FG on third. Now connect pin number 5 to pin number 9. After that connect pin number 6 to pin number 11. Then connect pin number 7 to pin number 4. Now connect pin number 14 to pin number 15. After that connect pin number 10 to pin number 14. Now make sure that all fault switches are in off position. Keep SW5 and SW6 in up position. Then keep SW3 and SW4 in left position. Now observe 32 kilohertz at socket 17 and then put CROs positive on terminal 7 and ground to pin number 26 and observe the modulated adaptive delta output. So when we will see, you can see the modulated output wave on CR. Now for demodulated connection, connect pin number 18 to pin number 19. Now connect pin number 20 to input 1 on NGLPF card. Now we will observe the output from the 2P1 terminal of NGLPF card 
and we will put the ground on socket number 26 or pin number 7 26 you can see the demodulated output so with this experiment we end the adaptive cvsd delta mode demode experiment with this we end our experiment upon cm5 delta adaptive delta cvsd Sigma Delta Modulation and Demodulation Experimental Panel So now let's start with another interesting kit of this panel that is CM6 Amplitude Modulation Demodulation Experimental Panel So now let's refer to the first experiment of this kit Amplitude Modulation using DSB TC Modulator Unit objective. On the completion of this unit, you will be able to study amplitude modulation using DSB modulator. Now, let's move on to the procedure. First, connect plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from main unit to the kit of CM6. Connect plus 12 volt on point number 1. Connect minus 12 volt on point number 3 and connect ground on pin number or point number 2. Now ensure that all switch faults are in off position. Now apply audio input 1 kHz 200 millivolt VPP sign from audio generator to socket 12 from DT double FG3. You can set the audio output frequency from this port. For switch on or push this to sign so that we can provide sine wave through this audio output and then connect it to terminal 12. Now apply carrier input 500 kilohertz from 6 VPP sign from DT double FG 3 function generator to socket 16. You can set 500 kilohertz from here through this port and then adjust frequency with the help of this port. Keep switch SW1 at TC means left position. Now connect CRO between 11 and socket 32 and observe the waveform. You can see the waveform on CRO. Now with this we end our experiment of amplitude modulation using DSB TC modulator. Now let's start with another experiment of ceramic BPF filter. Unit objective of this experiment is that on completion of this unit you will be able to study characteristics of ceramic band pass filter. So let's move on to the procedures. Connect plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from master unit to banana sockets 1, 3 and 2 respectively. Now ensure that all fault switches are in off position. Now apply function generator output of 444, 444 kHz on CRO time base 0.5 unit second to 4.5 division. 1 VPP sign to socket 7 from function generator on master unit. Now connect CRO socket between 8 and 32. Now you can see when we put CRO across pin number 8 and 32 ground you can see the wave in the CR. Now when we will increase the frequency by 4 kHz each time you can see there is a slight rise in the wave as we are increasing the, the frequency. So you can fill the table by increasing 4 kHz frequency and noting down the reading in the table. So with this we end our experiment upon ceramic pass BPF filter. Let's start with another experiment. SSB SC modulation for upper and lower side band. So let's move on to the procedure. Procedure let's start. 
connect plus 12 volt minus 12 volt and ground from master to unit to banana socket 1 3 and 2 now make connection as audio output 4 and 20 Now we will connect function generator output of sine wave 600 kilohertz to socket 9 and 24. Now we will connect pin number 10 to pin number 16 and then pin number 5 to pin number 12. Now we will connect pin number 17 to pin number 18. On connecting CRO across pin number 13 and ground 32, we get the desired output wave. Here you can see on CR. Now with this we end our experiment upon this SSB SC modulation for upper and lower side band. And with this we end our experiments upon kit or experimental panel CM6. Now let's start with our seventh module that is frequency modulation and demodulation panel CM7. So let's start with our first experiment upon this module frequency modulation using reactance modulator. So let's move on to its procedure. Firstly, we will connect plus 12 volt minus 12 volt in ground from master unit to banana socket 1, 3 and 2. Ensure that all switch faults are in off position. Set DC input preset. VR1 to 5.5 volt approx at the rate middle point. So you can adjust this when the arrow is facing straight. Now we will apply audio input 4 kHz 1.5 VPP to socket 14 from function generator on main unit. You can set 4 kHz through this frequency port. Now connect point 11 and socket 4. Now we will connect CRO between 6 socket number and 21. You can see the modulated frequency waveform on CRO. So with this we end this experiment upon frequency modulation using reactance modulator. Now let's start with another experiment of by Armstrong modulator frequency modulation through Armstrong modulator unit objective on completion of this unit you will be able to study frequency modulation using Armstrong modulator firstly connect plus 12 volt minus 12 volt and ground from master unit to banana socket 1 3 and 2 respectively ensure that all switch faults are in off position Keep SW5 in up position means Armstrong modulator. Now this will include the down counter IC divided by 64 into PLL. By dividing VCO out and then feeding back to PLL for comparison. Now set audio output using this frequency port at DTFG3 to 70 Hz 200 V. PP sign and set carrier FG output to 7.5 kilohertz to VPP sign. Now we will give the audio output to FM input. Now we will take out the FM output on DTFGV and feed this to socket 7. PLIP. 
Now we will connect the output of FGOP to PLL input of pin number 7. Now we will put CRO between ground and TP23 and see the output on CRO. As you can see the output waveform on CRO. You can refer to the output waveform in the manual given. Now with this we end our experiment upon this of frequency modulation using Armstrong modulator. And with this we end our experiment on kit or panel number CM7. Let's move on to another interesting panel of this kit. Data formatting and reformatting experimental panel CM8. Now let's start with the first experiment. So we will do the first experiment as RZ NRZL, NRZM, NRZS, Biophase Mark, Biophase, Manchester Encoder Decoder. So let's start with the procedure and wiring. So firstly we will connect plus 12 volt and ground from master unit to socket 1 and 2 of panel respectively. Now observe 250 kilohertz at socket 8 on CR and 32 kilohertz at socket 4 on CR. So we will use 22 as ground and we will measure at point number 8. You can see the waveform is coming is coming near 250 hertz. Now at point number 4. The waveform is again coming near 32 to 34 kilohertz. Now keep SW6 on downside that is 250 kilohertz mode. Connect socket 8 to socket 11. Now connect socket 11 to input of clock PRBS. Now we will connect the PRBS data from LGLPF to pin number 14. Make sure that the switch on NGLPF card is in on position. Now we will connect socket number 18 to socket number 9. Now we will connect socket number 9 to socket number 7. After that, connect TX clock and recover C uh, clock to CH1 and CH2 channel of CR. Now, as you can see, when we connect our CRO between ground pin number 22 and pin number 12 recovered clock, you can see the waveform in the CR. Now we will connect socket 12 RX clock to recovered clock at point 30. Now Keep switch fault position 2 on on position and rest at off position. Now select particular encoder decoder pair by pressing step switch. This is a step switch from which you can select encoder or decoders. Now observe encoded output at socket number 18 and decoded output at socket number 20. So at point number 18 you can see the waveform encoded waveform in the CR and at point number 20 you can see the detected waveform in CR. With this we end our experiment upon RJ, RZ, NRZ, L, NRZ, M, NRZ, S, Biophase Mark, Biophase Manchester Encoder and Decoder. Let's start with next experiment of study of bipolar RB encoder. Now firstly connect plus 12 volt and ground from master unit to socket 1 and 2 of CM8 panel respectively. 
Now again we need to observe 250 kilohertz at socket 8 and 32 kilohertz at socket 4. Now we will keep SW6 in downside at 250 kilohertz and mode SW4 up at bipolar RB. Now we will connect socket 8 to socket 11. Now we will connect socket 11 to the input clock of PRBS NGLPF card on main unit. Make sure that switch PRBS clock is on and then we will connect the PRBS data to socket number 14. Now select RZ AMI using pulsar switch present here. Now connect socket 15 to socket 9. Now connect socket 9 to socket 7. And then connect TXL clock and recover clock to channel 1 and 2 of CR. Now after checking them connect socket 13 to socket 12. Now keep switch fault position 2 in on position and dress in off position. Now we will observe encoded output at socket 15 and detected output at socket 20. You can see the encoded output at socket 15 and then the detected output at socket 20. In CR. With this, we end our experiment of study of bipolar RB encoder. Now, let's start with another experiment of study of differential debate MSB, LSB encoder and decoder. So, now let's start with the procedure. We will connect plus 12 volt to end ground to master, from master unit to socket 1 and 2 of CM8 panel, respectively. Now, again, we will observe 250 kHz at socket number 8 and at socket number 4 32 kilohertz now we will keep sw6 in downside at 250 kilohertz mode now we will connect 8 to socket 11 then we will connect socket 11 to prbbs clock here at NGLPF card. Now we will take the output of PRBS data from NGLPF card to the socket 14. Keep the switch on an LGLPF card. Now select DBIT LED encoder and decoder pair by pressing step switch or pulsar switch present here. So LED 7 should glow as you can see here. Now we will connect socket 18 to socket 17. After that we will connect socket 19 to socket 21. After that we will connect socket 18 or 19 to socket 7. Here I am connecting socket 19 from socket 7. Now we will connect TXL clock and recovered clock that is socket number 13 and 12. After that we will switch the fault position of second on on position and rest at off position. Now we will detect the output at detected output at socket 20. You can see the detected output at socket 20 in the CR. With this we end our experiment on study of differential debate MSB LSD decoder and encoder. 
So with this we end our experiments on CM8 panel that is data formatting and reformatting experimental panel. So let's start with another interesting kit in this panel. So this kit is Fourier analysis cum synthesis experimental panel CM9. So let's move to the first experiment that is Fourier analysis as its name says. So the procedure for this is firstly we will need to connect plus 12 volt ground and minus 12 volt to 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Make sure that all fault switches are in off position. Here. Now apply 1 kHz 2 VPP square wave 50% duty at socket 4. So we will adjust it through this. We will put it down to square wave and we will adjust the frequency of square wave using a CRO from this port. Now we will give this input or audio output of square wave to point number 4 or socket number 4 on CM9 panel. Set DC offset port which is it at 0. You can put it in such a way that the black arrow or mark faces the right direction. Now observe DC 1 to 9th harmonic at socket TP1 to TP10 on CR. We will use socket number 8 as ground point and then we will measure DC at TP1. You can see in the CRO, then TP2, then TP3. You can see different waveforms at TP54, TP5, TP6, TP7, TP8, TP9 and TP10. Now with this you can fill the table given in the manual by using different pins and at given VPP at 1 kHz 50% duty cycle. Same procedure will go on for 25% duty cycle just change or adjust the duty cycle of square wave at 25% duty. With this we end our experiment on Fourier analysis and now we start our next experiment Fourier synthesis. So let's start with the procedure. Similarly connect plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from master unit to banana socket 1, 3 and 2. Now we will make connections from FG input 4 from output here audio output to pin number 4. Here we are using the same 1 kHz 2 VPP square wave with 50% duty cycle at socket 4. Now we will again set the DC offset to 0 using offset control port here. And now we will observe the synthesized square wave at socket 9. So we will connect CRO between socket number 8 and socket number 9. You can see the waveform in the CRO when we connect it between socket 9 and socket 8. With this we end our experiment on Fourier synthesis. Now we end our experiment upon this kit of Fourier analysis cum synthesis experiment panel CM9. Now let's move on to our 10th panel that is transmission line simulated experimental panel CM10. So let me give you a little brief about this panel. It has pulse width controller here, external power supply, input impedance matching, standing wave display, 50 ohm line driver. And here we have two BNC1 and BNC2 ports which is BNC2 banana adapters here. Now let's move on to our first experiment on this panel which is using delay using pulse input. Unit objective is in this unit you will be able to study how pulse gets delayed while transmission. Now let me start with the procedure. 
connect plus 12 volt minus 12 volt and ground from master unit to banana sockets 1 3 and 2 respectively keep all fault switches in off position Keep slider switch at triangular position in function generator DT double F G three card on main unit. That is this switch button. You have to keep this in triangular wave on the upward side at upmost point. Now keep slider switch S W one on C M ten panel at negative H. This is the S W one switch. We have to pull it pull down to negative H. Now we will apply triangular wave from function generator DT double F G three. of 66 kilohertz and 2 vpp at socket 4 of pulse width control block so we will apply this to this now we will connect point number 5 or socket number 5 to socket number 14 after that we will connect socket number 18 to socket number 12 Now we will connect socket number thirteen to socket number twenty one at CM ten panel. Then we will connect the socket number twenty five to socket number twenty seven that is ground. And we will also connect the ground pin of CRO at twenty seven point. Now we will check the input before the fifty ohms section area of the resistance. And now let's check it between twelve and twenty seven. you can see the waveform in the cro you can see the waveform in the cro and verify it from the manual now let's see the cro readings when we apply 50 ohm sectional resistance at point number 30 you can see the difference in the waveforms and verify it from the manual so same will be coming at point number 21 So with this we end our experiment 1 that is relay using pulse input. Now let's start with our another experiment of matching using a pulse input. The unit of this objective is in this unit you will be able to study pulse propagation of transmission of square wave. Now let's move on to the procedure and wiring. Now firstly as you know we have to connect plus 12 volt minus 12 volt and ground from master unit to banana sockets 1 2 and 3 which we have connected now make keep all switches or fault switches in off position that is here the fault switches are given here now we will keep the slider switch at triangular position in dt double fg3 panel which is in the main unit Now we will keep slider switch S W one on C M ten panel at negative A. We will pull it full down. Now we will apply triangular wave of sixty six kilohertz. We can set this triangular wave frequency from here, and we will then apply it to socket number four. So now I will connect this triangular uh, triangular wave to this triangular input on C M ten panel. Now we will connect socket number five, five volt pulse output to socket number fourteen, and then we will connect socket number eighteen to socket number twelve. Now we will check the input at socket number twelve. Use pin number twenty seven or socket number twenty seven as ground for CR. So you can see the wave in the CR. Now we will connect socket number thirteen to socket number twenty one, and then socket number twenty five to socket number twenty seven. We will set fifty ohm resistance from this resistance spot. Now we can check the CRO readings on output of fifty ohms. Here you can see the input waveform got modified or changed. 
in the CR. So now, in this short circuit position, we will remove socket number 27, socket number 25 pins, and then we will connect socket number 13 directly to socket number 27. And then we can check the waveform again. So here, as it is short circuit, we can't see the output waveform. But we are giving the input waveform same. So with this, we end our experiment of matching using a pulse input. Now, let's move on to our next experiment, effect of reactive termination, unit objective. In this unit, you will be able to study effect of reactive termination on simulated line. Now, let me move on to the procedure of this wiring system. Now, we will connect firstly plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt and ground from master unit to banana socket 1, 3 and 2, which we have done. Now, make connection like this. Keep slider switch at triangular position on DT double FG3 panel. Here. And then keep slider switch SW1 on CM10 panel in the negative edge position. Now we will apply this triangular wave of 66 kHz to socket number 4 on pulse width control. Now we will connect Five, pin number 5 to pin number 14. After that, we will connect pin number 18 to pin number 12. After that, we will connect socket number 16 or pin number 16 to socket number 17. As we are doing this wiring sequence for 44 NF. Now we will connect socket number 13 to socket number 16. After that we will connect pin number 25 to pin number 27. So now we will put CRO between 13 and pin number 27 and you can see the readings in the CR. And now with this we end our this experiment also. We end our experiment or experimental panel CM10. Now let's start with our next kit that is Experimental panel set of AMFM radio kit P90. So now let me give you a brief discussion about this kit and its component. So this is the FM amplifier, FM antenna, FM mixer and oscillator, ASC, first FM amplifier, second M FM if amplifier, FM ratio detector, this is the audio amplifier. Now for AM section, this is the AM mixer, this is the AM antenna, it is the first AM if amplifier, it is the second AM if amplifier, it is the imp if amplifier, AM detector and then audio amplifier. This is the volume control of this kit. Here we have the speakers, here is the battery port. Here we can give the supply it directly from the kit provided and this cable is for direct supply. Now let's give power supply to this kit. Firstly we will connect the ground terminal of this main unit's power supply to pin number 3 that is ground supply of this FM AM panel. Then we will give plus 12 volt to the pin number 2 supply of FM AM panel. So you can see the red light is blinking here on. You can switch on the switch uh, from this port. This is a multifunctional port used for controlling switch on and off plus volume control. Now do not temper L1 and L2 which are this and this. 
and keep all control IFTs means these IFT1, IFT2, IFT3, IFT4, IFT5 in half position set SW1 to antenna position this which is SW1 you can set it on FM position by putting it on upper direction now vary gang and adjust pitch of L3 alone so that if you hear a faint sound station at least this is the point where you can switch the volumes as said. Now tune pink and blue IFTs together for maximum clarity and less noise on loudspeaker. This is the pink and blue IFTs. You have to adjust it in such a way that you get maximum clarity and less noise on loudspeaker. Now we will tune orange IFT, green IFT 2 and green IFT 3 means this orange IFT1, IFT2, IFT3 in such a way that we achieve maximum volume of sound on speaker. Tuning IFTs will set these properly tuned for frequencies anywhere in 9 to 12 megahertz. Do some iteration between step number 3 and 4 which I have told you to catch a station which have maximum volume without distortion and noise. You can set the value of 9 to 12 megahertz from this button or from this spot. Now if above is not successful then we will select FG mode using slider switch SW1 and then and then we will provide the output from the main unit of nearly 1 kilohertz to this FG input. You can see the sound it has increased and we will switch this to FG function generator. Now to get good signal peak on its various TPs once you get all set 3 plus 5 IFT shift slider FWM to antenna now play with switch of L3 alone to get station on loudspeaker or earphone then jump to step 2. And if you still hear the noise, put out the connections and try above procedure in step 5 by removing R44 or remove link. As this will reduce gain of audio amplifier, also try to tune using earphones as it is less prone to disturbance. This is the earphone socket from which you can pin the earphones. Now with this, we end our FM AM radio kit too. So with this, we end our experiment upon communication system trainer and its different panels. If you have any queries, please contact Tesla Technologies Private Limited and if you like the video, please like, share and subscribe.